So some clinics are asking their clients to pay by cash only. I can see what your gut reaction to this is. No, 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 I don't, I don't do cash. But hang on for one minute. You should never say no automatically. You should always weigh up the pros and cons of any offer made to you. In this video, we're gonna weigh up the pros and cons of paying for your hair transplant by cash only versus other methods. Also gonna look at whether paying by cash is actually an opportunity that you can exploit. All that coming up after this intro. So let's start by examining why clinics are asking people to pay by cash. What do they exactly get out of it? Let's have a look. So the first obvious benefit for the clinic is the cost because there are lots of fees when it comes to moving money about. For example, with credit cards, the fees can be as high as 3% per transaction. And when you're dealing with, you know, 5K, 10K, that can be quite a lot of money. Even when you do transfers like PayPal or wire transfer, there could be fees with those, especially if you're transferring from one country to another country rather than within the, the same country. Debit cards is a bit better. Uh, there's minimal fees with those, if, uh, if any at all. So those remain a good option. Next really good benefit for the clinic is tax savings. Because you are giving them lots of, um, like, you know, the whole amount in cash, there's no electronic trail. The, you know, nobody can check, you know, this money came from this account to that account on this date, none of that. And of course, for tax purposes, this, is, this can potentially be really good for them because they can, because nobody has record of the transaction, they can just under report the earnings and save lots of money on tax. I'm not saying that every every clinic does this, but they, you know this opens up an opportunity to do this. Yet another benefit for the clinic is certainty, because when you pay them in cash, the money is with them immediately that second. They're not at, you know they don't have to wait you know three or four days for the money to clear and the money to eventually reach their bank account, like happens with credit cards and when you do wire transfers the money is there with them that instant. Uh, literally, they just go to the bank the next day, deposit it, and the money is there. And of course, any business would love that. Those are some serious benefits. Now, let's look at whether the clinic uh, is taking on any risk by actually accepting cash, whether there's any risk in it for them. Let's have a look. In terms of risks for the clinic, to be honest, I couldn't really think of any. There's hardly any, not much. Possibly, you could argue that they run the risk of um, ending up with forged notes. But this is a very remote risk because there's, you know, there's lots of sophisticated ways to detect forged banknotes. And to be honest, banknotes are so sophisticated now with you know, holograms and watermarks and all those that forging them has become extremely difficult. So right, let's move on to talking about the client as in you. What risks are you exposing yourself to when you pay by cash only for your hair transplant? Let's have a look. So the first obvious risk is theft or loss of the money because you're carrying such a big amount, you could lose it, especially when you're traveling, you're moving between countries, you're already kind of stressed and distracted by the travel itself, so you are quite vulnerable, especially if you are an inexperienced traveler, you're quite vulnerable to theft. And unfortunately, once you lose it, it's gonna be virtually impossible to get back if you are in a foreign country, which may have different systems, um, different language, to your own country, it's just gonna be very, very difficult. Second risk I could think of is issues with customs. So there are different rules in different countries in terms of customs. Some countries like uh, Turkey, if you bring anything over $5,000, you have to apparently declare this, you have to do the paperwork, you have to show something called proof of purchase from your bank that this is you know, your money and that you got it from them. Uh, the rules might be different in the UK, in the UK, I believe anything under 10,000 euros is okay. But then if you're going to the US, to Greece, to Belgium, you have to do the research and check what the rules are in those countries. And obviously that involves, that can involve delays because if, for example, you get the rules wrong and you are carry more than you are allowed to, you don't declare it, you could get stopped at the airport, you could have uh, some interviews with customs and get delayed and possibly even worse, get punished. And of course, there's the paperwork as well. So for example, in the UK, if you intend to carry above a certain amount, you have to actually fill some certain forms up to 72 hours before you fly out. And of course, the rules will be different again in different countries. The third risk, although it's more of an inconvenience than a risk, it's, it's just pure inconvenience. It's just a headache because you have to withdraw money. 
That means you have to physically, I'm not talking about going to a cash point, a cash machine, you physically have, because this is a large amount, you have to go to the bank, show them some ID, maybe meet the bank manager, uh, they do some checks, they ask you where you're going, blah, 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 and you might have to show them your, your flight tickets. And then you have to research the customs rules, um, you know, how much money you're allowed to bring into the country, that you have to declare all that money, that means you have to do the paperwork, and then possibly if things go wrong, which sometimes they do when you're traveling, you might have some hassle at the airports if you made a mistake or something, innocent mistake. So it's just pure inconvenience and headache. Oh, that's some serious risks. Now let's look at the flip side. Is there even any benefits in paying back cash for you? Let's have a look. What are the benefits for you paying by cash to the clinic? Uh, well, I don't know if you disagree, leave a comment down below. As far as I see it, uh, the benefits are zero zilch, zip and nada, nothing. I don't see any benefits except, except what I'm about to tell you now. This is my personal opinion, you might disagree, but the only way I would pay back cash is if I get a big hefty discount. Think about it, I'm going to the bank, to get the money out, I'm doing customs, I'm doing paperwork, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm bringing proof of purchase, I'm researching the rules um, of every country that I'm going to. Why? Why am I going through all this? If the clinic say, okay, you do all this, you've taken on all this work, then we'll give you all this discount, fine, uh, but then I, we, can, we can talk. Otherwise, I would seriously think about going to another clinic. But, and there's a big but, if this is the only clinic for you, you, you really can't see yourself going, going anywhere else, then by all means go through the hassle of paying by cash. Anyway, enough about me. What do you think? Leave your comments below the video and I'll respond as soon as I can. Take care. See you soon.